thin silicon really is the future. If you want to drive costs down, we've got to continue to get thinner, thinner wafers. Please explain something to me, why, what's happening? Yeah, well, let's, let's try and do that. Let's try and break it down a little bit. Because silicon is probably the next biggest item in a bill of materials for a normal module or a cell where we can make some big strides forward with relatively little pain for the industry. Currently, the industry is working out, what, about 180, 160 micron at the extreme thickness silicon. We can push that down in incremental steps with technology we have today, uh, with the, because the metallizations are available, and what is the metallization going to do to enable that? It, you lower the lay down of the metallization. You lower the um, thermo, uh, thermocycle adhesion effects. Uh, and so you can maybe take the silicon down to 150, 140 uh, microns thick. But there comes a point where it becomes just too brittle for the standard processes to handle. And you're going to have to switch to make any further, switch in manufacturing technique and design. So let's think about what that means. As you go to a very brittle cell, you're going to need to give it some support during the manufacturing process. So let's call that um, a carrier system. And as you have this cell on the carrier system, you're going to put all the metallizations or the contact on one side of it. So this is um, like an IBC or a pullback contact type cell. Then as you mount it into the module, you need the module to be capable of uh, taking a cell that's only got contacts on one side. So it's a back contact, back sheet, and that could have embedded tracks or another form of enabling full back contact cells. Well, that's once you have it onto the back seat, you've made contact with all the individual cells into a module. As you assemble the full module with a, um, an EVA type material or an encapsulant, for this module of the future, we're not quite sure what it's going to need. Are you going to need to make it more rigid at this point? Or have you already got your rigidity and because of the um, potential for damage on the cells, are you going to need a material that's um, soft or com compliant? If you are, both of those are available today. It doesn't really matter. Choices can be made later in the road. But um, the point being, uh, I think we're ready for these materials, both from the encapsulant, from the back contact, and from metallizations. OK, you make a good point there, but I'm a bit curious. Um, it seems to me there's multiple ways in which you could possibly uh, once, you've, you know, once you can actually do the thin, the thin film wafer, is there's multiple ways of how you attach that, you know, because the handling's the issue, but the what, new mechanisms of doing that. I mean, is this all real theory, or is there some real practical ways where, that, that's not ready now, but can be do, are achievable, shall we say? No, and we could almost say ready now, because if we look at the technologies available today that would utilise similar needs. Um, we're looking at a metal wrap through cell where you're putting more the bus bars on the back already. That's with a thick, let's call it a thick cell because this is still at 180 microns, but you've then got all the bus bars at the back and today people are designing modules with full back contact. Um, so these materials and processes are being developed now and they'll be ready for when we need to go to the substrate carried um, manufacturing process in the future. Is it... The trouble I have as well here with this is cost. You know, you may, we may be saving on the, on the wafer cost, but are we adding in complexity in processes, new materials? What, what, what's, what can you say on that? No, that's a really good question as well, because like with any technology change, it's full cost of ownership, levelized cost of ownership, as, as most people now look at it, um, for, for introducing the new processes. So again, let's break it down. There's no change to the metallization how the metallization will be applied on these thin cells, maybe non-contact or off-contact, but it's similar cost that today. As you pick and place them, let's call it pick and place, onto this back film, that's a similar process to you have today. It's even lower cost to put them with all the same um, contacts on the back than it would be today. You probably won't have soldering processes. You probably have polymer type contacts which is, again, cured thermally, no extra cost there. And as you assemble the module, it's likely to be fairly conventional, although you're going to have to take care around breakage and so on. 
Breakage is going to be the thing, uh, yield is going to be the thing that controls this. So manufacturing processes and systems, the equipment is going to be key. I think the materials and the technology to do it is around. Okay, um, the big question, and one probably you can't answer right now, um, time frames for adoption. Where, where are we looking at? Yeah. Good, uh, no, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> but, um, so what is, what is a thin cell? Let's say the ultimate thin cell is 100 microns, for example, which is reasonable. And at 100 microns, or very close to it, maybe 90-ish, the wafer becomes flexible again, so you actually probably get your yields back. But let's say 100 microns for argument's sake. This won't happen overnight. It's not a step change we're talking about. It's incremental changes with conventional technology. Then this flip into the pullback contact. So what are, what are we really talking about? I think in order to get down to 100 microns, it will be the five to 10 year horizon. Um, there's a lot of issues on actually manufacturing those wafers today in a cost competitive sense. And look at the cost of silicon today. It's its lowest it's been for a long, long time. But that's today. Uh, it is to do with other capacity in the industry and so on. Let's plan for the future. Five to 10 years, I think, is when the, the price of silicon probably will rise again. And that's the time frame when I would expect people to drive these costs out of the bombs more aggressively than just incrementally, as we said, they could do today.